The Bono State Government has begun the recruitment of local hunters to join the fight against the Boko Haram insurgency. Governor Babagana Zulum, the state governor, stated that he is seeking new approach to ending the conflict. Sources in the state government have stated that the government plans to recruit 10,000 men with voodoo powers and hunting skills. Is this really where we are? Still with me in the studio are Liborios Oshoma, legal practitioner, thank you very much. And of course, Kristen Wogu, legal practitioner, thank you very much. Oh. A former hunter. <laughs> you are a former <laughs> hunter. <laughs> okay, um, this seems a bit strange oh God, to um, a lot of persons, but let's get uh, an understanding of why the government chose to take this part. Of course, they put out a certain uh, statement in the media. Let's listen to, um, let's get him on the phone actually. Uh, we're going to reach the SSA on media. Okay, um, I'm told we don't have him on the phone yet. As soon as we have him on the phone, we'll bring him in uh, to the conversation. So I'll just get my guest to come in. 10,000 hunters with voodoo powers from across northern states and even uh, um, the uh, Niger to come and help in a fight against insurgency. Let me start with you. What's your take? Um, all hands must be on deck for, you know, um, to cover the, a menace, you know, that had defiled all known you know, solutions such as this. So if the governor decides to think outside the box, I, I, I won't blame him. Remember, this is not the first time they are employing local hunters. Remember, there was a time they had local vigilante. It was the same people. They just they, they change in nomenclature. You know, the local vigilante they had at that time, um, uh, what happened to them? You know, how well did this local vigilante perform? And what was the budget, you know, for this local vigilante? The local hunters are they going to use the same arms okay, so that they to used to hunt? You, because uh, I know, okay. I'm told we have the SSA on media on the phone. Uh, do we have him on the phone? Hello. Is he on the phone? Okay. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, please, could you explain um, a little more on the decision of the government to go with 10,000 hunters to fight Boko Haram? Uh, let me first and foremost start by saying that uh, the issue of the insurgency in Borno and the Northeast by, by, by extension is an unconventional way of the usual war that people used to know. Uh, if you could remember, it's about a decade now. The issue of the insurgency has been bedeviling Borno and not East Nigeria. Uh, if I can take you on the memory lane, uh, in 2013, the then government seek the services of hunters to complement the efforts of our security specifically the armed forces and the civilian JTF to fight the insurgency. Uh, we could, if we, if the people of Bono can remember vividly, in that time, the, the services of the hunters has also helped in dousing the strength of the Boko Haram terrorists. Uh, over time, it came down and then it resurfaced again. Uh, the governor, in his magnanimity and concern for his people, seek to uh, the services of uh, uh, volunteers, civilian JTF, and hunters, so as to assist the military in overcoming the, the, the issue of insurgency. Uh, I understand. Mm. I understand that uh, the Buratai chief of staff, yes. chief of army staff actually, um, said to train these men, the governor has to vouch uh, for them. Is it possible for the governor to vouch for the integrity of these men? How well do you know the, them? Is it the, not a security the, risk? Yes, the, the, issue is, is the, the issue of security, I don't want to delve into it into from the to from its integrity. But these uh, hunters, we all know they have, we believe they have some spiritual powers that they can help us in getting to the enclaves of these uh, terrorists. 
I believe it will also help. We are not saying the military is not doing what we must say that the military has is and is continue doing its best to make sure that the not is uh, uh, overcome the issue of insurgency. Uh, if you could remember recently, the governor was in far away Saudi Arabia and he also seek or uh, intervention spiritually to see that. Uh, God in his infinite mercy answer the prayers and the, the decision, I mean, the, the feelings of our people here. So he went further to say he will continue to seek for support anywhere to see, to have a lasting and sustainable peace in the in Borno State and not East by extension. So what we are trying to say here is that these people, if they are willing to assist us, they will come in and the governor will continue to assist and the military, there are no two ways about it. The governor has been with them and will continue to be with them to support them to ensure that the issue of insurgency is come to a transport to rest finally. All right. Thank you very much for sharing uh, your time with us. You are welcome. Yes. Gentlemen, your yeah. thoughts. Yes, let, I let, was... me, let me start with Mr. Okay. Og Oga. Thank you very much. Um, let's just shoot straight from the heaps. This approach will just say that it's a vote of no confidence on, on Nigerian military. military, for starters, because we must start from that perspective. And um, but I, I understand it is the military that's supposed to provide the training for the hunters. It is the military well, that's supposed to provide the security right? that the hunters are coming to provide. Let's start from there. <laughs> that's why they are there. So the duty of military is not to provide training for hunters to do the work of the military. We must start from that perspective. And that is also failure of leadership. Now, there are a few questions that are arising from this. One, this is no more local hunters, for starters. They are- Spiritual hunters. No, no, they are international hunters because they are coming from offshore. They are coming from outside of Nigeria. <laughs> you know, from Mali, from Niger, from, you know, just the West Coast. So, there are no more local hunters. Well, one, one, one would say that we have a situation. Conventional means doesn't seem to be working. Yeah. Is it so out of place for the government to maybe solicit for help? No, like like I manner? said, like I said, any help or any method that can help solve, you know, a, a, a menace that had defiled all known government solution, not solution, uh, conventional solutions government solution. Permit me, there are two different things here. And, and so, like if you li listen to the SSA on media, he said they have spiritual powers. And you know, in Nigeria, we are very religious people, but even though we are less godly. And, and so, there's this belief that everything, you know, must be, you have a spiritual part of it, and then you have the physical. And, but yet, uh, if we benchmark this, our approach, to solving this insurgency problem against international best practice. Have we, can we, in all honesty, say that our conventional means is not helpful? The Chief of Army Staff talked about motiv less motivation from the soldiers. Are we finding ways to motivate these people? At some point, we talk about equipment, and we now wanted to buy equipment. We went to buy the ones that will come in 2020, 2021. Meanwhile, the problem is here with us. And so we're talking about hunters with these ding guns. Um, is it ding guns that will solve the problems where, you know, the assault rifles have not been able to solve? And, and so when you look at this, really, it's laughable. And I, I expect the governor to be talking about um, intelligence gathering, recruiting, and all of this you shouldn't even be discussing, you know, in the media, recruiting people who will, the everyday people, who will, you know, can the military can use to gather information, you know, to know the whereabouts of these people. I'm not talking about hunters with spiritual powers. These hunters, are they coming from the moon? You let, know, let, with spiritual powers. When the world, so sorry, quickly, running up on this, when the world is going technological, talking about using drones to fish out people wherever they are, you are talking about spiritual powers and hunters. So it is laughable, but at the end of the day, what is going to happen is that money will be voted for this project and nobody will account for it, just like uh, the civilian JTF. No, but one, one must, one, one must not under, 
underestimate what the uh, civilian JTF have been able to help Information. The achieve. Information. When you talk about information gathering, these are people, they know themselves. Good. You know, they know themselves, so, so you'll be able to infiltrate. Okay, let's, so if we're talking about infiltrating, it's a different thing and not spiritual right, powers. Let's, let's look at the um, implication of this. Uh, on the one hand, it might not be uh, such a great idea for some people. On the other hand, it could um, provide some, you know, solution in the long term. So what are the likely risks and benefits of getting these people in? I think the risks are really enormous. Um, foremost... What really makes you makes us think that the people that will emerge as hunters are not the Boko Haram, Boko Haram we are trying to resolve? Because you see, how, how will are I you profile them? How are you going to profile? How are you going to edit them? That's that's what the question that was put to them, and they said that the government can vouch for the integrity of these people. On, on based on what standards are they going to do the vouching? Yeah, spiritual. And, and then, well, spiritual. <laughs> and then you look at it, another situation where, assuming, without conceding, that they will actually fight Boko Haram. What are the guarantees? Since they have spiritual powers, that they will not emerge ultimately in the far, far future to become something even more was, ferocious than Boko Haram itself. Because what led us to Boko Haram was the fact that you know some people, government empowered some people to fight you know, some um, unconventional means. Yeah, the, the fight has gone on for over 10 years. We don't seem to be making Because we don't want to fight way. it. We, if we are ready to fight Boko Haram, let, look, let me tell you, let's not uh, window dress this problem. Um, people who make, um, who create um, anti-malaria drugs, you know, who create malaria so that the drugs will sell. And so, also in the same vein, people who collect security vote create insecurity so that you have opportunity to spend that security That is actually a votes. strong allegation. Yes, yes, I am telling you. And so, there have been accusations and counter-accusations within themselves. And you hear that somebody went away with 400 million naira, men for soldiers. Somebody buried money men for soldiers in safety tanks. You know, so as long as insecurity persists, there's going to be money for some persons to continually spend. And, and so, and that's why the insecurity will never go away. And uh, there was a time when, you know, even governors from this region, if you remember, Nyako accused the army of, uh, of eliminating the North. Why at that time, you know, some persons were trying to find solution, lasting solution to the menace of Boko Haram. And, and, and so, what we need to ask ourselves is, are we really fighting this menace the way it should be fought? If we are not, all this um, window dressing approach to it won't solve it. We'll create, you know, so much sensation out of these spiritual powers, and then if we go tomorrow, we'll look for another uh, solution, or another, uh, uh, we'll be discussing something else. Now we're talking about even this whole issue has spread around the country. People now go on a highway and just kill for no just Should cause. Should we give them the benefit of a doubt? Well, I'm not saying not give them the benefit let, of let, doubt. Let's bring Kristen so. in. Should we give them the benefit of a doubt? I am not sure I will vote for such benefit of doubt because we are talking about national security. Um, and we, we need to have a more scientific, empirical approach. Something that, look, I think, just imagine somebody outside of the nation hearing that we are going to use hunters with spiritual powers to fight mercenaries who they, are coming they, with tanks. They've already involved clerics. Um, about 30 clerics <laughs> have been, you know, they are on the payroll of the government to give, provide to, daily to prayer prayers. for Bonu State. And then they are going beyond the prayers. They are getting these hunters to help. So I don't have any problem with prayers, but look, uh, somebody says pray, but remember to lock your car. I mean, we need to have more empirical approach. Some of these clerics who are going around with heavy security also, who are on government payroll, collecting from security vote, but they are being secured with, by the army and police also. Look, let's, like my colleague here said, um, Wogu, we need to use scientific method to fight a scientific, you know, war. You don't sit down and begin to use prayers and spiritual powers to fight a scientific war. The world had moved beyond what we are doing. What we need to be doing is how is the world processing such crisis? 
Imagine, you know, you have the war in Syria, and then somebody comes and says, well, we have recruited some hunters, you know, that want to, and then you want, to, want them to use spiritual powers to fight the war. Imagine, today you finish with this, let's assume the army trains them. They are not members of the Nigerian army, and then Nigeria, you spend money and you train them, and after training, you leave them. After they fight, then they go. These are people you have spent money on. What's the guarantee that tomorrow they will not be, you know, another menace because you have not provided them, you have not kept them in a place? You know, so if you want, if you feel you need more hands, why don't you just recruit more hands in the Nigerian Army or in the Nigerian Navy? And then also, if you need more equipment, why don't you, even in the Army, recently they did uh, the, the, the um, Army chaplain, did um, the, the spiritual angle of the fight by calling on, you know, um, the, 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 uh, spiritual arm of the army to intensify prayers uh, you're, in this oh, fight. Obviously, you, so, so, you're not in support of that. No, I'm, not I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm okay. not, I'm not, because I say even a contradiction here, if they are so powerful, spiritually or otherwise, why do we need the army to still train them? Uh, okay. it's, it's a contradiction. Let All right, I'm afraid that, I'm afraid the, that's the where The people that have, have failed Thank you should very train much. those that... <laughs> Thank you very much for welcome, coming on the program. Welcome. I appreciate your time. Welcome. And thanks for staying with us. We'll go on a short break now for Plus Package, and when we return, I will give my take. Stay with us. The Benue State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal, sitting in Makadi, has upheld the victory of Governor Samuel Otom of the People's Democratic Party as the valid winner of the 2019 governorship election in Benue State. The tribunal, in a unanimous decision by its three-man panel chaired by Justice Henry Olushi, dismissed the petition of the All Progressive Congress candidate Emmanuel Jimmy, challenging Governor Otom's victory. Reading the 10-hour judgment, Justice Olushi said the APC candidate Emmanuel Jimmy failed to provide substantial evidence to prove his allegations of overvoting and non-compliance with the provisions of Electoral Act. I expected that we would get victory. Since we did get victory, that's the reason why we are going to the appellate court. The tribunal analyzed everything. The petitioners complained in hundreds of polling units. They called on only 31 polling unit agents. That you can't do that. Each polling unit, you must call an agent to come and give it. And of the 31 polling unit agents, you heard it all. Some of them denied their statements, some of them didn't sign their witness statements on oath, and a lot of other inhibitions. You also uh, heard about uh, the, the judgment or the ruling about the card reader. So there's so much dwelt on the card reader, which is, is not the law, electoral law and jurisprudence in Nigeria. The tribunal's judgment is sound. If they stay appeal, we have what we call cross appeal or respondents notice because some of our points were dismissed. We somehow feel agreed. If they stay appeal, we will file respondents notice or cross appeal. Why do we beaker when solutions will be so much better and speak louder than any voice ever could? There is a problem, and for anyone concerned about the welfare of Abia State, the conversation should be, how do we solve our collective problem? That said, bad roads are not specific to Abia State. It is a national issue, and I believe we already know what needs to be done. We certainly don't lack ideas. What seems to be missing is the ironclad political will to get cracking. Is there one so courageous? Let me use this opportunity to reiterate that the commissioning of roads and subsequent advertisement in the media in the run-up to elections in this country has to stop. As a people, we need to reach a point where politicians do not declare new roads as political achievements, where as citizens we hold them to greater mandate than tar, cement and water. Thank you for watching the program tonight. It returns same time tomorrow. Please join us again. Until then, be well.